So what did your parents think when you're like, I want to be a rapper? And they're like, uh, what's where we go wrong? We're not. <laughs> no. No, you're, <laughs> you're, we you're asking the right question. You're asking the right questions. These are all, these are all perfect questions. That's for all right. We have here today Chris Black. He is a well respected performer in Cleveland music scene. His versatile music abilities include songwriting, singing, rapping, guitar, and piano. Chris's style is unique as it is a combination of Christian rap and contemporary music, which is scripturally driven. He has been performing for over 12 years, of which the first were spent performing secular music. In the past seven years, however, Chris has dedicated his purpose in music to helping others find their life worth in Jesus. Chris's newest album, Second Mile, is being released at the end of April, and his goal with this album is to inspire people of all ages to follow God and to live a life of righteousness. Welcome, Chris, to Birthday Thank Fruit you. of Atlanta. <laughs> Thank you. Very happy to be I'm here. I'm loving the music, loving it, loving it, loving it. Thank you. I, I can't top that introduction. I maybe we should just end the interview here because the introduction <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to make it any better than that. <laughs> you said you can't top the introduction. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't be able to top the introduction. <laughs> you will, you're good, you're good. Yeah, so are you originally from Cleveland? Yeah, so I'm born and raised in Willoughby, Ohio, which is a suburb on the east side of Cleveland. <clears throat> and uh, so I've played all over the Cleveland area, west side, east side, south side, whatever. Yeah. And at what age did you know that you wanted to be a rapper? Hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Well, I wrote my very first rap when I was in fifth grade. So I was probably 10 years old or so. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I think it was about a girl. I don't know. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. And uh, so, but come freshman year of high school is when I really said, you know what, this is actually pretty fun to do and pretty enjoyable. And I had been doing rock music at the time too. Mm -hmm. So then I found a way to sort of combine the two where I could play my instruments and sing and then also rap in the same song. And it, it worked out pretty well. Wow. So I was listening to your music and you just remind me of Superman because you know how he was Clark Kent. He was all, you know, had his little suit on and <laughs> things like that. And then he transforms into Superman. <laughs> and that's when I met you, you look like the all American boy next door in corporate America. And then <laughs> I listened to your music and you're like, <laughs> you know, you, I'm like, wait, he just did this transformation in front of me. And I love it. I love your versatility. I Thank love you. it. Yes. I'm like, wow. What well, an element of surprise. <laughs> well, thank you know, going on that. So I don't know. Are you familiar with Peabody's? It used to be yes. a concert venue downtown Cleveland. Yes. You know, everybody knows Peabody's. Yes. So um, you know, I used to do shows there, and this was early on. Mm -hmm. So going, you know, to that point um so i did a show there and it was one of those where they had like a lineup of like 20 different rappers you know and it was a lot of hardcore guys you know rapping about god knows what right and uh i was in high school at the time and you can probably put two and two together i didn't quite fit in <laughs> with, with the other performer right 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 <laughs> and uh so i got on stage and i had an acoustic guitar with me and i think it was I think at first there was kind of this awkward, oh gosh, what is this guy getting ready to do? <laughs> this 16 year old kid with an acoustic guitar at a Peabody's rap concert. <laughs> and uh, I can actually, there's a YouTube a video on YouTube. I can send you the link. Really? And, uh, yeah. So I started playing the song crazy by Gnarls Barkley. And then uh, I played it on the guitar and sang, and then, you know, went into a rap over it. And I think it was a, a real shocker for the whole crowd. It was, it was a good experience. Oh, 
remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. There was something so pleasant about that day. Even your emotions had a couple, and so I stay. Yeah. 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 Without care, yeah, I was out of touch. But it wasn't because I didn't know enough. I just knew too much. Yeah. Yeah. And I was out of touch. Yeah. Yeah. to see you transform like that. I'm like, I love the versatility. And that's why I put on my grace and grit t-shirt because that's what you reminded me of. You've got that grace and then you, you had the little grit to you. You know, I like that. I was like, let me put on my grace and grit <laughs> t-shirt. Oh, thanks, Lana. <laughs> yes, yeah. awesome. So what did your parents think when you're like, I want to be a rapper? I know, they're like, <laughs> uh, what's the movie go wrong? We're not- <laughs> No. no, you're <laughs> you're, oh you're asking the right you're asking the right <laughs> questions. These are all these are all pertinent <laughs> questions, that's for sure. <laughs> um, well, they didn't know about it for a while. They knew I was in these rock bands, but they didn't know I was doing the rap thing for a while. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, oh, so you were hiding it? <laughs> maybe uninten- intentionally, unintentionally, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, but but they've always been extremely supportive and I have come to all my shows if they were available mm-hmm. and have oh. always been you know the first ones to congratulate me when I released oh, okay. a new CD or something so they they've always been very supportive wow okay good so growing up which hip-hop artist inspired you uh B.O.B okay if, if if you go back and listen to his early music uh, like on his first few mixtapes and even even his first two, maybe three albums, um, he he had such a, well, to me, it was unique sound of where he would play the guitar or he'd play piano and he, and it sounded, it was very musical mm. and he would sing and then he would also rap and then he would change it up and, and do more, you know, traditional, just straight hip hop music. And he would blend them all together and it just sounded, it worked so well. And, and, and it really resonated with me because when I was real little, I was, you know, I listened to the Beatles and music like that. And then I started getting into rap music. And so I had this, you know, this blended music taste of stuff that I listened to. And once I started listening to him to his early music, it was like, wow. So it is possible to combine, yeah. Yeah. you know, th- this musical stuff and, and rap and, and rap. <laughs> have a good right. blend. So yes. Th- yeah. yeah. You- yeah, yeah, you did a good job. So in your secular years, what did you rap about? Um, well, you know, a lot of it, the first few years I was rapping about how great I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Hey. <laughs> Doing your own somewhere horn. Along, <laughs> somewhere along the way, I just realized that, you know, I'm not as, I'm not as great as I think I am, you know, and, you know, life humbles you at some point. Right. And so that happened. And, um, you know, so, but, but there was also a lot of, you know, I, I've always tried to also put the truth in my songs and, you know, uh, certain things about, 
you know, maybe the, the, the TV might not be giving you the full truth on certain things and we could have a whole different interview on, <laughs> right. you know, on, on those types of topics. But, <clears throat> you know, so I always just tried to put truth in songs, but it wasn't until, like you said, probably about seven years ago um, that I said, you know what, let's just, let's try to just glorify God and <clears throat> see if we can't just help people with music as opposed right. to always trying to make it all about myself. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things you mentioned was life humbles you. So let's talk about the great surrender. Like, where did you just surrender? What made you surrender and say, you know what? I'm going to turn this thing around. I'm going to go a different direction with my rap music. Um, I had about 10 great surrenders. So which one? <laughs> 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 whichever well, you want to share with us today <laughs> yeah no I think the great the greatest surrender was when it was just you know when I sort of hit the what I call my my rock bottom and mm -hmm. uh so I um you know I went my freshman year to Ohio State yeah. and uh that just didn't work out because I wasn't you know yeah. I, I just wasn't there <laughs> and uh, so I really ruined that opportunity and uh you know I just remember there was a point where I came home and um yeah actually it was kind of funny so at Ohio State I I had met a guy who his uh his mom worked for Microsoft and he comes to me one day and he goes hey you know my mom can uh book you to to perform at this Microsoft you know employment or recruitment event or something in Pittsburgh I'm like okay yeah whatever and uh and he goes yeah yeah and uh you know she thinks they might pay you five thousand dollars for this just for a one hour set and I was like well I highly doubt that but we'll see so I said yeah yeah we'll do it and sure enough that Microsoft has a lot of money apparently and they paid me who you know I didn't I was you know not real special and you know, they paid me $5,000 just for an hour set. Well, at the time, you know, my influences in, in music and everything were not the best, you know, they, they, they weren't teaching me to walk with Christ and to try to serve others and put it that way. Right. <laughs> so um, I spent that money left and right, just as quick as I could just doing, you know, everything that these rappers and others had, had taught me to do. Mm. And, uh, you know, so then, okay, so then fast forward, then I came home after Ohio State and kind of failed at, you know, a few opportunities there. And uh, there was just a point, I remember going to the ATM and getting the receipt out of the, and it was down to like $25 in my bank account. And, you know, and it was, where, where did all that money, money you know, other people, <laughs> would, other people would kill for that opportunity. Right. Um, and where did it all go? And then, you know, I just over, over time, I just kept seeing that I was just letting everybody down. You know, I have, oh. a, I have a real strong family and family relationships and I was just letting everybody down. And just, oh. so I just remember there was a, a time where I would just kind of got in my room and cried out to God, just, you know, <laughs> God, I give up. <laughs> right. Know, just, right. Just help me out. I just can't do it anymore. Wow. And so what was the biggest lesson you've learned in this journey? Um, I think the biggest lesson, and I keep relearning it, is that <laughs> <laughs> um, everything you do and everything you say and the way you carry yourself, it all has an effect on everybody else around you. Absolutely. So, you know, in the small example is like, you know, if you're in a bad mood, you know, oh, well, I'm just not going to talk to people today. I'm just going to put my head down and, you know, I don't want to be talked to, so I'm not going to talk to anybody else. And, you know, that's fine to an extent, but the thing is, is that that's also, that's, that's affecting everybody around you, whether you realize it or not. And that's just on a small scale. So let alone when you say something mean or degrading to some, you know, all these things have effects on others. So I, I just, you know, I, I, I guess the lesson just gets back to loving your neighbor as yourself and trying to, you know, care about the people around you and the, right. e the effect you're having on them. Yes, absolutely. So tell me a little bit about this latest project, Second Mile, and what inspired you to write this album? 
Okay, sure. So um, the title, Second Mile, you know, where Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, he talk, we, we're, so we're all, we're allowed to talk about Jesus here, right? Absolutely. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to talk about yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. <All right>. Mm. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm all about Jesus. Good. <laughs> no, and, and, I, and the only reason I asked is just because I met you t- two days ago. And so I'm, <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, so. but sh- you met me with a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging Good out point. with a pastor. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who had yes. a shirt that said warning, I might start talking, talking about, about Jesus. Jesus. Right. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. No. All right. All right. Uh, sorry. Sorry for it. But no. yeah, so um, you know, in the Sermon on the Mount where he says, you know, if someone smites you on your right cheek, turn to him the other. If he sues you at the law and takes away that coat, let him have your cloak. And then he says, if someone compels you to go a mile, go with him twain or go with him. Mm two miles yeah and um, so the second mile and then the, the sort of overarching theme or underlying theme behind it is you know with this music that I've made over the years and you know I've performed a lot and I've done a lot of things with it um, I feel like that whole first half where you talked about the, you know the, the secular style and all that Mm-hmm. was like my first mile and um you know it, it was I you know got a little discouraged because you know it, it's not easy to to make it in music <laughs> you mm-hmm. know and if you have all your hope in that like it says in Proverbs hope deferred maketh the heart sick yes and if you have a lot of hope in that and then you see that it's just not coming to fruition and life is just pushing you in this what you've always seen as just a you know, sub par life, you know, it, it, it can be degrading if you yeah. are not degrading, but it can damage, right. you know, if you've had all this hope built up that, right. oh, I'm going to make it, I'm going to be big. This is going to be my life. And, and then, you know, so uh, this album is about, you know what? All right. You can't be a cry baby about it. You know, you just, <laughs> you just got to get keep going, you keep going, walk the second mile. So yes. this, so this is, you know, me starting to walk the second mile. Awesome. Wow. So you talked about it being difficult to get into this industry. What are some of the things that have been difficult for you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. Um, th- I think the main thing is just finding the right people that, to help you. Mm. And but then with that, you got to be willing to let people help you. And, you know, I, I had the double whammy because I didn't have many people trying to help me <laughs> or if they were, they maybe weren't the right people to right. help me. Uh, and I also was so stubborn that, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I probably rejected more help than I should have. Wow. Okay. You know, you and, can always uh, go back and be like, Hey, remember me? <laughs> remember me? <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'll take you up on that offer now. Yeah. That's all about humbling, eating humble pie. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of humble pie. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's difficult. And especially, you know, and Cleveland musicians, you know, the more you talk to them, you know, you, a lot of us complain about, you know, we don't support each other enough and, and things like, you know, you go down to Nashville and, and, and granted Nashville is a huge music hub in general, but still you go to Nashville and, you know, there's tons of people that are trying to quote unquote, make it in music Mm -hmm. and they're all helping each other out and everyone's Mm -hmm. got each other's backs. And it's kind of like a, we're in this together mentality. Mm -hmm. And in Cleveland, I've heard a lot of other musicians and I tend to agree with them just sort of express that it doesn't feel the same here in Cleveland. It, 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 you know, it seems like we're all splintered. We're all on our own little islands and, uh, you know, we don't really help each other out much. Yeah. That's the theme of Cleveland. It seems like not even with the music industry, but a lot of other industries that people are not uniting and it's not good. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about purpose, sometimes you may have to go to different locations to fulfill your purpose. Have you ever thought about going to some of those cities or states where 
people are willing to help you? I mean, it's a good question. I've, I, I, I have, you know, the thought has crossed my mind, but I've always just thought in, you know, and I've had other people sort of give me this advice is, you know, just if you can build a following where you're at, mm -hmm. uh, do that first before worrying about trying to, to take it to, you know, to a different market like an LA or a New York or a Nashville or something like that. Um, so that's always kind of been the, the mentality that I've, that I've gone for is, you know, what, let me just try to just see what I can do here. And, uh, you know, before I worry about taking it elsewhere. And I've, you know, at least to my own spirit, I've, you know, backed it up with, with, with scripture. Cause I feel like just in anything, when you want to serve God and, and serve Jesus, it's, you can get discouraged when you see these people who travel the world and they got speaking engagements all over and they have best-selling books and all this, and they're just doing so much for God. And how come I'm not, you know, I'm, I must be not as good as them. And, uh, I feel like, you know, Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. And the one guy even asked him, he said, okay, well, who's my neighbor? And then Jesus gave the story of the good Samaritan where the guy got beat up and he was laying there on the side of the road. And the guy that stopped by and saw him and, and helped him, that was his neighbor. And um, so, you know, at least in my heart and in my mind, I just feel like you know, focus on those that you come in contact with mm. at the Metro parks, <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> right? You know, right. Or, or wherever. Yes. Just, you know, because obviously if everyone in the world just did that, we'd all be fine. So, right. Everybody know. can't go to LA and New York and Chicago. Right. So that's where you need God to, the scripture says, make room for your gift. He will make room for your gift, you know? So, and I think it was, God orchestrated the way we all met at the park, walking on a trail, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and oh <laughs> yeah, was. oh it was because we have connections. And so it's just, even if it's just one or two people to connect you to, those people know other people and it just keeps going on and on and on. So um, yeah, when anything is growing, what they say, you know, what the scripture says, some plant the seed others water other pulls the weed so we could be like the little seed somebody else will come and water it someone else will pull the weeds you know so that kind of thing in your life to just help you out to wherever your final destination is that he would have sure. you to be yeah yeah I, yeah <clears throat> I think that's I think that's you know exciting to look at it that way mm -hmm. because you know it's sort of like you don't know what you don't know where every little thing is going to lead. And I wasn't even supposed to be at the park, you know, at that time. And at that day, You're I right. just, I knew Stephanie was going to be there. And I, you know, so I, I was on my way home from work and I just said, you know, let me try to, you know, and we've been together for a little bit now. So I didn't think it would be creepy if I just showed up at the park looking for her. <laughs> so, right. Right. You know, so I thought, let me just show up at the park, see if I could see her, and then maybe we'll go for a little walk. So that, so that was totally right. not supposed to happen. And know. that was my first time walking on that trail. Wow. I've never been there before. Yeah. So yeah, things like that. <laughs> yeah, they, absolutely. God will set it up. And you just, I think it's all to build your trust and faith in him, you know, and to not look at other people because some people who you see that appear to be very successful, God may not even have told them to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And you really only get credit for what he told you to do. So you may see someone blowing up and doing all this. And he's like, I didn't call you to be a singer. <laughs> I wanted you to go over here and be a lawyer. What? Yeah. You, know, you never know, you know? So if this walk with the Lord is personal and we just got to keep our eyes on him. Timing is everything. Sometimes like, you know, we're not ready for the success. And we, there's some things that we have to learn and people that have to purge us. God has to purge us from people and ideas and get our character together so that we are able to get the blessing and not just get it, but sustain it. Cause a lot of times people get it. And if their character is not right, they lose it all. So wow. it's just yeah. about the timing, the preparation and just enjoy the process. And um, like you said, I like how you said, blessing everybody that you come in contact with right here, um, which is kind of scripture. If you're faithful with few, then he'll give you much. Mm -hmm. So start right. with being faithful with the few, 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think that too, that, that takes the pressure off too, because you can get so down and I feel like, yeah. you know, um, what does it say in Genesis that the serpent was the most subtle of all the beasts of the field. And, you know, he, he can be real subtle with the way he works oh. and who knows, oh. he, he might be in his little planning room with all his little saying, you know what, I can use this famous, you know, you, you know, Jonathan McReynolds or yes. you know, guys like that. Yes. You know, he might be sitting there saying, all right, guys, you know, this, this really sucks that we got this Jonathan McReynolds guy praising Jesus everywhere. He goes, but what, what can we do to, to you? And he might be sitting there saying, you know what, if we can get someone to, to look at Jonathan McReynolds and the success he's had, and if we can get someone in their heart to say, oh, I'm not good enough for God because they're comparing themselves to him. Yes. Uh, then he, he goes, you know, let's, let's go for that. That might be a good plan B since, yes. since we already lost yes. out on, on yes. that. And so, but I think when you just, just focus on the people around you that you come in contact with, that to me takes the pressure off because, <clears throat> yeah, you know, yeah, that's all. And just ask God, where are we going with this thing? Cause everybody is not a millionaire. Everybody is not a, 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 a major celebrity. There are people who can sing really good, you know, much better than the artists that you know. Like, you have to ask God, you gave me this. How, how big is this supposed to be? Because if it's not supposed to be that big, then you're going to hurt yourself trying to be somewhere. He might say, I'm going to bless you here, but then I'm going to bless you in this other area. You might have this other opportunity come up. It might not all be music. It could be a business opportunity that he may bring to you. It, you just never know. Like, I'm not sure what your occupation is now, but you just never know. It could be the real estate. It could be the stock market. You, you just never know how he's going to bless you so that you can live this comfortable life that you want to live. It might not all be in the yeah. music. So you want to ask him how, what does this look like? You know? Yeah, that's a good point. How big is this supposed to be? How big is this business? How big is my ministry? Because I've asked that too. Like, okay, am I supposed to be international? Am I supposed to be just local? Am I, you know, what do you want? Yeah. You gave this to me, God. What does this look like? Well, and the hard part for me has always been to true, you know, I got no problem asking him. My, my hard part is being okay with the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's so hard to, get out of my own way sometimes that's all of us yeah that's all of us but after you get beat up enough <laughs> <laughs> then you learn to say okay okay lord your way not my will but thy will be done fine okay because your true happiness is in his perfect will flat out mm -hmm. yeah. so it's like i want to be perfectly happy and if getting to this place that i think is the place to be is not going to bring me happiness then i don't really want to be there wow yeah 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 i know no, that's, yeah i because I the yeah. ultimate goal is to be happy you don't want a lot of money and fame and you're miserable which we see happen all the time they're really big they got all this money and they still kill themselves absolutely no, I, I know when you think about it, you know, and, and, and those people, what are they really seeking? Well, they're seeking, they just want to be happy too. They just oh, don't. And, but they thought they it know. was in the fame or they thought it was in the money or, you know, and it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. I like there's, there's a, um, <clears throat> a verse, I think it's in Luke 12 where uh, Jesus is talking about here. If, if you have a second, I can find it. Mm -hmm. um, where he's, he's talking about, uh, you know, which of you, if you have a son and he asks you for a fish, will he give him a serpent? Or if he asks you for bread, will you give him a right. rock? And, uh, <clears throat> let's see. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. God has us. And, you know, the scripture says, don't worry about tomorrow you know he's there already he's got us you know just take one day at a time learn how to trust him each day and be obedient <laughs> yep. and do what he says do do step one you know we want the big blueprint we want to see it all and we want to know it all and god's like i'm just gonna guide you step by step one step at a time just be obedient to this you know a lot of yeah. us we have problems with just being obedient to step one yeah 
know? So that verse, I was like, I thought it was in Luke 12, but I didn't see it. So um, <laughs> where he's saying, you know, if, if your son asks you for a fish, mm-hmm. are you going to give him a serpent? Mm-hmm. Or if he asks you for bread, are you going to give him a rock? Right. And obviously you'd say, well, no, that's ridiculous. So then he said, okay, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father? And I thought it was interesting. He said, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And I thought, well, that's interesting that he said the Holy Spirit. And then I thought about it and it's like, you know, if you're going to ask God for something, Mm -hmm. I feel like the best thing you could ask him for is for the Holy Spirit, because that's all we're really after anyways. We all just want to have that life and that peace in our Mm -hmm. souls. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all we're really after. So, you know, I don't know. Somehow life has a way of teaching you, reteaching the lesson over and over again Mm -hmm. that no, 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 you know, it keeps pulling you this way. Mm -hmm. Oh, happiness is over here. Mm -hmm. And you got to recalibrate. No, no, no. It's over here. I think the best way to get God to move is, is the question, how can I help others? Because the greatest gift is love. So how can you use me to love others? Totally agree. You know, love others. And, um, you know, Solomon asked for wisdom. God really loved that. He asked for wisdom. He didn't ask for things. He asked for wisdom, but he gave him so much more because all he wanted was this wisdom. So I tend to ask, you know, give me the wisdom, Lord, to do whatever it is you've called me to do and um, use me to be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. The ones I don't want to, especially because that's where the reward is. (laughs) The Bible (laughs) says that's what the Bible says, you know, like it's so easy to love the, the unlovable, but you really get kudos when you love, you know, I mean, it's easy to love the lovable, but you really get yep. kudos when you're loving the unlovable. So help me to be a blessing, even the people that I just don't want you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So God, is I, good. Mm-hmm. you know, I like too in that, <clears throat> you know, like it makes me think of Hebrews 11, where it talks about, you know, people call it the hall of faith. Yeah. And it says, you know, faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not seen, or, or, or uh, yeah. whatever. You know, yeah. you know what I'm That's saying. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> faith, Christian. But I like that whole chapter. He goes through examples of guys like Abraham and Moses and whoever else who did something based on what God told them. And uh, I thought that was really special because that that is the evidence that, Hey, maybe God really did talk to this guy, but I feel like that also is the evidence of your faith is, you know, and like in James where it says you can believe, but are you really acting on it? Mm. You know, faith without works is dead. So I feel like it's one thing to believe in God. And it's another thing to have faith in God. I feel like that has the word faith to me has an action attached to it. You know, you can believe in God and sit in your bedroom all day long. <laughs> right. It's an action word. So is love, right? It's all action. Yeah. Words. Words are, that talk is cheap, right? right. I, yeah. Show me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? You really trust God to, to mm-hmm. take that first step and, and, you know, whatever it is, start mm-hmm. a podcast or talk to somebody at the park or whatever it is. Do you really right. have the trust in God yeah. to, to take that first step? I, I know that this second album, Second Mile, is going to do really well because you have the right attitude. You're going into it this time, transform, you know, leaning on him, trusting him. And you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so, and that's just funny you said that because I, I remember talking to um, my recording and my sound engineer and, <clears throat> you know, we just, we sort of developed this relationship where we have these heart to hearts and things. And, you know, um, it's, it's David and Nakaji, by the way, he's, he's in Los Angeles, but he, shout out he Dave. Up, hey, shout out Dave. He's, oh man, <laughs> he started recording. He's, he's in Los Angeles now and he records with some of the big time guys. And I'm, I'm very happy to, you know, and proud to be able to call him a personal friend. And, oh, uh, he, he, um, you know, so we, we were talking one time and, I forget how we got to this topic, but I remember just saying to him, you know, yeah, I'm at the point where, you know, if I don't 
get rich and famous off of music, like that's okay. I, I, okay. I, I said, you know, my objective is just if I can help somebody through music, then awesome. that's good. Yeah. I'm just going to try to do that. And you, it's going to happen. So do you, what they call it? Like, um, I'm so corny. <laughs> Flow, you know, like right on the spot. What is that? Oh, do freestyle. Do freestyle. Yes. Do you freestyle? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do um let me get I a do. little let me get a little something let me get a little get a people a little something a little freestyle <laughs> uh, what a bar a bar i think it's called a bar bar too <laughs> right <laughs> Got a little bar from your second mile album a couple bars okay all right all right yeah 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 i'll, I'll do a bar from the okay you need me to do I a beat the scriptures <laughs> read the lord's verse before i write this one yeah uh my hope is not missing. I know that he listens. Prodigal son, I'm going back quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfectly written. The words in the scriptures preserved them like silver. Perversions say different. The sermons and missions, words and rhythm, service I've given. Just the verse from the mission if I'm first not forgiven. Hey, see, I will call upon the Lord with my knees bent, fingers clenched, falling on the floor through the seasons. Believe in him. Autumn's at the door. I've been pleading, but Jesus is calm in the storm. Yeah, like Psalms 54. Black last name, but it was Solomon before, yeah. Not saying I'm proud of my generations, just explaining my obsession with Proverbs 4, hey. Going somewhere where the famine is gone, big change from the path I was on, narrow way, I'm establishing on it. Different state from my past performance, I was spit flame, but just Babylon in it. So who do your lips praise when you finish the race and those cameras on? Left his name to keep standing strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, love it, love it. And what is the name of that song? That oh, song's yeah. called Night Walk. Night Walk. Night Walk. And that'll be the, the, the last song on the album. Wow. So where will the viewers be able to get your music from? So if they go to my website, chrisblackohio.com, and I had to add the Ohio because if you Google Chris Black, all sorts of stuff comes up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So chrisblackohio.com. And there's a little uh, page on there where you can sign up for my email newsletter so I can, you know, bug you every now and then with updates. And uh, if you go on there, it'll have links. The album will be up on Spotify. It'll be on Apple Music, on Amazon Music, all the normal streaming platforms. Awesome. So my plan is to just direct people to my website and funnel it through there. Funnel it through there. And what about your social media tags? I know you're on Instagram. Wanted to give yep. me your Instagram. Instagram is Chris Black Ohio. Um, YouTube is Chris Black Ohio. Uh, the, the Twitter is Chris Black Ohio. Granted, I, I don't think I've sent out a tweet in five years. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on but, Facebook? Uh, Facebook is Chris Black Ohio. Okay. And uh, I, I stay probably the most active on Instagram and, and Facebook because when I post to Instagram, it, it sends it to Facebook too. So I'm, I'm definitely most active on Facebook and Instagram. And you'll see, I do little practice raps on Instagram. Those are, those are pretty cool too. I'd, I'd like to maybe make a mixtape or something out of those one day. Cause I was looking for you on, I, we are, we're friends on Instagram. I was looking for you on Facebook under Chris Black. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't find you because no, I wasn't putting in the Ohio. Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta friend you. Wow, I'm so excited. All right, so anything else you'd like to let the fans? I'm claiming them; they're fans. You got a lot of fans, and <laughs> fans. Anything else you want the fans to know about you or your music? Um. No, I guess I just like to let them know, um, you know, just like we were saying, just you don't have to do something real big and great to have value in God's eyes. You know, awesome. you, from, the, from the day you are conceived, you have value from God and that will never change and nothing will ever take that away. Yeah, and right. uh, just seek God and love, love the Lord and get right with him and things will be generally okay. Oh, absolutely. I thank you so much for taking this opportunity to come here and speak with me. And I look forward to coming to your shows. So don't forget about me. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go and sign up 
And uh, <laughs> I want to come out and support you because I really believe in you and what you're doing. Thanks a lot, Lana. Yeah, and to that point, we are in the process of booking some summer gigs to to help promote the album, and that's what I love. I love getting on stage and performing the music. So, yeah, make sure you come to one of them because I I think you'll have fun. And I thank you very much for having me. This is this has been a great discussion. Yes. All right. Take care. Thanks, Lana. You too.